stayed in my VW bus that night, uh, and um, I thought it was kind of cool, you know, it's, you know, it was it was the summertime in San Francisco, and I could drive around, and it was kind of cool. So I stayed there, and, uh, and I had the job. I was working at a committee at the Second City. That's an improv that he started. So I had a job. I wasn't making much. It was a theater. Theater, but enough where I could pay for gas and oil yeah. and, um, and and my, my meals, and I could even save a couple of bucks. So I lived in my car, and then what happened is you start to get into the homeless life, and you think, hey man, I'm, I'm doing this. And all of a sudden, you, you become hardwired. I don't, I don't know. You think, hey, this is cool. I'm, I'm good at this. And so you change over. You buy into being homeless. Mm -hmm. You think it's like, you think it's like camping out. It's really not like camping out. Oh, God, no. Your mind thinks, I'm good at something. I'm good at survival. You start to dig it. And I did. I, 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 for a year, Ted has, absolutely. Um, I was good at, and I'm sure you, you get it down. You know, you, you know all the moves, where to go. I had all my parking spots. I knew where the cops would you know, find you. Um, you. You start to make friends with other homeless people. You learn tricks, you learn scams, and, and you're there. And, and I was thinking, you know, this people, this is good writing. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is, I can cash it in. And then I don't know what happened. Oh, and then I, you know, I found a, a girl who's, I was kind of sleeping over and sleeping over, and one thing led to another. Because I could park in her driveway. She had a driveway. You start looking for people in driveways. Yes, yeah. for some reason. Uh -huh. It's not that all your friends have driveways over the summer. You know? well, I had a really great couch. Ted like that. <laughs> or, a, or a couch. You, you, you start to, yeah. And then finally, I, I moved in and I stayed there. And then when that broke up, I just moved to an apartment. That part of my life was over. But most of my writing is based on the, that that year. Yeah. And. Yeah. Uh, so that was pretty good. This is awesome because you know I um, I left a normal life in uh, when I left my divorce my wife May 2008. I was working on the campaign doing lighting the Obama campaign. Uh, the election uh, ended uh, November 4th. My job was over and I moved in my RV. I trucked across the country to LA to you know make it because I was stuck in New Hampshire for so long. My wife wouldn't leave it. In the marriage I was forcing it. Trying to live this ideal life. I get to LA. I'm here for two weeks. Going, God, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I'm like, God, I don't want to be here. I drove out of the town, through the desert, grabbed a guitar on the way out of town. I bought a guitar, grabbed a book, How to Teach Yourself How to Play Guitar, and I changed my life in the desert. I started three months of living in my RV, just three months in Tonto National Forest. I camped with Native Americans, and then I came over to San Francisco, visited some friends, and then I started couch surfing for a year. And then I, you know, <laughs> oh, couch surfing. For, I yeah. couch surfed for a couple of months. <laughs> well, I between I live in my car for a week, I go to I go go live in my RV. But you know, I I face I have friends all over the the country, and I don't have a job, and I'm taking this opportunity to go visit as many people as possible. Yeah, there you go. Because you know, if once I go to LA, make I'm lemonade out of a lemon. You know, I don't want to go to LA to go be a filmmaker until I'm ready to, you know, until I'm ready. And and what happened during this two and a half years on the road was it became a journey of self discovery and I overcame so many I figured out my I figured out so much my Facebook fans know it because I live my life openly online and, and you know, I just I finally accepted myself in February when I had my mental breakdown in San Francisco and uh it's always so it is awesome. And I had it you know, I mean it, but if my mental breakdown was great, it wasn't really a mental breakdown, I was exhausted. And I reached out and asked for help for the first time in my life. I never knew, I never had, knew how to ask for help. But I found out that moment, ran out know how to ask for help. And instead of falling and hitting like a bag of cement, I fell and I 
broke off a mold I've been wearing for so long, and I sprung up like a super ball. And he Ken has really been did. Like, I, have been Listen, I knew this guy in New Hampshire. He was he put on the bravest face in the world, but he was the most unhappy guy. Pale. Look how dark that guy is. He was pale as sheets in, in New Hampshire. Nobody tried harder in a marriage. He threw his wife a surprise wedding for their 10th anniversary. That is how hard he tried in that marriage. I just, I wanted it right, but, you know, it, I was living the American dream, and I'm an artist. Right. And I'm an artist who doesn't mind living on the streets, and I'm an actor also, and I'm a writer and a creator, and I'm an artist. And what I find living on the streets is it brings me, you know, it brings me to a, a raw, primal reality of mankind, you know, because I see the world as I eat the food as I eat. You meet interesting people. Meet interesting people. People you don't meet or narrow. Right. Exactly, because there's some. I really, I do hate to say it, but before you were you were down here living with the homeless people, I always felt a little bit like, oh God, you know, they're probably mostly on drugs. Right. Mostly. And then when you started telling me about your adventures, and I came down and spent time with some of these homeless people, like, right. you know what? I'm like a boyfriend away from being right here. So who am I to really judge? You right. Know? And yeah, I thought, but seriously, it's, I mean, I call myself homeless a lot because I've got a bank. Account. Well, look, look at this. Yeah, you've got this. You've got your guitar. You've got your arm. You're like homeless. Oh, they stole my guitar, man. Oh, well, no. that's the other thing. Did that go overboard? Did that go overboard? No, no, it was stolen. Oh, stolen. Okay. okay. <laughs> overboard stolen. But, but the, yeah, the one thing you got to understand about me, it's not glamorous. Don't you see know, like the You uh, one of the we got things, about a minute and a half. Okay, well, no, no, one no, of the no, things no. you also got to understand is there is a job involved in being homeless. And your job is watching your stuff. <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, I don't care who your friends are, how many friends you got, stuff disappears. <laughs> it's one of the one of the modus operandi. System of Larry of and being homeless. Oh man! I, hey man, where's my guitar? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, where's my shoes? Hey man, where's my iPhone? Where's my iPod? Where's my computer? Oh, I've iPhones and computers. Why you you don't have that one? Well, I'm homeless deluxe. Homeless deluxe. Yeah. Where's the highlight? I'm telling you, I'm not bragging about it, but like I just, I don't have an apartment. I didn't go to an apartment here because I, I'm mostly back in New Hampshire, New York, right now, and doing a music festival. I volunteer at a festival, so I thought when I arrived here, I'll just stay a week, I'll stay one. But just one thing led to another. I got really comfortable here. Well, that's another thing about homeless. One thing <laughs> does lead to another. I'll give you that. That's pretty much it. And it's awesome because. <laughs> We get to, my life is new every day, you know? It's, it's, I, I, it's, it's never the same twice. And I, I'm free of bills, I'm free of rent, I'm free of, you know, many responsibilities that um, I can put towards resourceful things like making TED TV or just having fun or spreading love. And, and my volunteering, because I, I volunteer around Venice City. Like I volunteer here, and yeah. used to volunteer at the the, thrift, the Bible Tabernacle Thrift Shop that I've been there for a while. I, I volunteer there, but at the Vera Davis Center, I, I pick up cigarette butts out there for that one because you know I said, "What can I do yeah. for you guys?" I saw you guys you say you're that. here for us, and you are also places where you say for for us to come to you, and you know I, I'd like to help out. Yeah, you I know? saw you doing that one day. You're yeah, and I was sweeping Abbot Kenny yeah. because Abbot Kenny is something. I love Abbot Kenny. I love Abbot Kenny. I, I, I don't sweep. There's a there's a there's a guy who does that. It's probably him. No, no, no. <laughs> he does that. There's a guy, yeah, because I I hang out also with uh, yeah. And oh, right, nine minutes. Oh, let me let me pause uh, that. Well, I'm We're gonna, gonna get a blended 